What's up, fish tankers? It's recap part two time. Before we jump into this episode, why don't you consider leaving a like, subscribing to my channel. If we can get my channel up to 3K by the end of 2023, that'd be very appreciated. As well as I'd like to shout out all the clippers out there and all the content creators that help me make these videos. Hobo Joe 421 ah geez, dude, Rocky Stream, Fish Tank, Dollar Stream, etc., etc. But without further ado, let's jump into episode number two. Day five. JC, aka Catwoman, is called out for stealing everyone's chips and being the enemy spy. And Detective Colmix, aka Batman, comes to her defense. Jet brings Summer back up to B3, and Jimmy, now at the lounge, starts talking to some of the fish individually, revealing that not only is he the infiltrator and a fan of MDE, but the entire fish tank is. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, at least I don't have to put up with that anymore. And as most of the fish now know that the infiltrator was basically everyone except JC, this effectively ends Fish Tank Season 2 and enacts Hell House Mode. All the fish that know the truth behind the infiltrator mystery are now back upstairs, relaying the info to the other fish. And as this is happening, the sharks immediately start dumping bags of garbage about the house, pulling all the food out of the fridge and the freezer, and even paying respects to John Tent with a mustard stomp. Summer, who's now in like a mental breakdown final form, thinks she has won the fish tank because all the other fish are infiltrators and they were hired actors and she's the only one real one there. She runs downstairs and bangs on the door, demanding to speak with production. Jet comes back up and tells the fish that if Summer can't come back to reality, that he'll need to kick her off the show. If I cannot convince her that this, she thinks that we put her on the Truman Show. So I'm going to continue talking to Summer. If uh, if she wants a place on the show, she's certainly invited. But if I, if I can't bring her down to earth and explain what the joke meant, then uh, she may be leaving. He also enacts a no speaking challenge, which Brian instantly fails and is kicked off the show. Until moments later, he's made to beg for forgiveness for another chance. Please let me stay. My life is total f dog sh If I don't like win some f money here, I have to go back home and join the f Coast Guard and probably die for Israel or some bullshit like that. After some much needed rest, the fish find that Summer wasn't able to come back to reality and would be leaving the show. But that's why today we're saying goodbye to our dear friend Summer. We're saying goodbye once and for all. We're giving all fish tank goodbye. Everybody, round of applause. Big round of applause. And as Gold Striker attempts to move on to the next activity, Summer leaves him perplexed. Y'all, we're going to have a big special ice cream dinner for everybody as a treat. Hey, where's the ice cream in this joint? <laughs> We got she checks herself into a mental hospital later that day. A poll is conducted to figure out who is the biggest chump in the house. Brian and Cole are the losers, or the winners. This means that Brian and Cole are now on the chopping block for elimination. With the challenge being gator squats. We used to settle it with what I like to call gator squats. You could do them, they're plumb easy. And the way you do them here gator squats, well, it's quite simple. And then you loop your arms together and you carry them like a backpack, like a mountain man with a backpack. And then all you do is you squat down. And then all you do, And then all you do is you squat down. Both men are resilient and refusing to quit. So Gold Striker ups the ante by adding a cinnamon challenge to speed up the process. Use the power of the cinnamon to get him down low like a dog. <laughs> like a plum dirty dog. <laughs> Brian lets out an emotional scream to demonstrate to the audience that there's more on the line for him than just internet fame. I don't have any of that. Out the apartment! Oh, Brian flips over Cole's back, which eliminates Cole. Oh! oh. 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 
And as Jet and the judge leave to deliberate, Cole succumbs to the emotional and physical stress of the situation. I still like you. I just have to do that. Cole, I have so much more respect for you now. <laughs> Even though Brian won, he declares that he had actually cheated on some level. We had two boys hoping and praying that they would win that there alligator squad contest. <laughs> but was impressed by their fighting spirit and is allowing both of them to stay. Brian, you said something. You said something that made me smile in the middle of the contest. You remember what you said, Brian? Um, if you're afraid to squash the ants beneath you, you'll never be able to walk. You said drink zip. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now I like me a cheater. I like me a liar. I like me a thief. And I like me someone that does squats that aren't that deep. Cause I do it myself sometimes, son. So I'll tell you what, as long as you keep drinking that zip, you're welcome to stay at my house. Thank you, sir. Deal. Well done. Deal. Mr. Cole, you're a strong boy. You did them squats good. You're staying too. I think I like both these young men. They will keep them around. Also, quite a bit of the audience is gay. <laughs> <laughs> and they like them greasy antics. JC later announces that she was moved by the passion of the two shirtless gator squatting men and realized that she doesn't have the desire to make it to the end, bowing out gracefully. I'm taking myself out of the competition. Um, and production stated that that's why neither um, Brian nor Cole is going home today. I just want to say, actually, you said something like while you were competing in there that made me think a lot. You said, um, if you can't like crush the ants, you can never walk in something. So I think my response to that is like my fin financial situation is definitely a lot better than you guys. And it's not because I pity your background or anything, but because this, if taking myself out can get you guys one step closer to like winning, then. I will do that. And just like that, two fish are gone, and we are now down to eight. Cole talks to the cams in B2, and TTS trolls him into thinking that JC said that she thought he was cute on IG. They also convinced him to kick a hole in the wall. Hey Cole, it's JC, I left my stuff so you can sniff it. Hope you like XOXO, see you soon. <laughs> Jet stops by and is unconcerned about the damage in the wall, but he does announce that starting January 1st, all of the fish will start having to pay rent in the tank with their chips, and whoever can't pay the rent that week will be evicted from the tank. Brian and Trish are cuddling, and then when prompted by TTS, they move into the closet to make out. This was like a very long bit that was going on here, so I, I can't show you everything, but TTS going off with them two in the closet was hilarious. So I'm just gonna include a couple clips right here. <laughs> Stop f***ing you bird brains, this is top J fine Jesus. Imagine the huge Trish took today and how bad it smelled. Then imagine kissing John Leguizamo. Make sure you put it in her ass to avoid a retard baby. I know y'all ain't f***ing, that's nasty, nasty ass, nasty, y'all nasty, nasty. Hey Trish and Brian, this is Trump, I endorse this. However, I'm leaving Melania for Trish. I can provide unlike you. Brian, this is your doctor. I have been desperately trying to reach you about your test results. Please contact me. Trish, it's your father. I am really happy that you've made it on a reality show. Now don't go embarrassing the family now. Once again, being tricked by TTS, Cole successfully cock blocks Brian. Jet told me to come in here. Brian, how would you rate the What are you doing in there? Do not Hold pork. Are you not kidding? Not open the f closet. Okay. Well, Jet, why did why did what's the purpose? Brian, you have earned my respect. But did Jet actually say you that, or are you just like? Jet, no, Jet actually said that. that All right. First, Is that my staff? No, it's not. Well, I, okay. Well, Jet, <laughs> whatever. Yo, girl, do you seriously? with that ass goddamn JJ. I was on the cold train, but after what happened on day five and a few things that happened on day six, I am officially unendorsing Cole. Day six. It's also worth mentioning, because I didn't think this was gonna turn into an actual bit. I thought this was just like a one-off thing Ben said, but 
Jimmy is so autistic, he just turned it into a bit and like is completely obsessed with it. Ben tells Jimmy that there's, I think, 11 mechanized dolls hiding in the house on some FNAF type thing and tasks him with like finding them by making baby noises or something. It, like it was all very silly, but he just keeps obsessing over it and it's almost just become like the cornerstone of his character at this point. So I have to include it, though I don't think it's actually going to lead to anything. Jimmy cracks the code to the vault in B2, it was N-I-C-R, hmm, who could have guessed that? And then finds out that the mystery inside is a hidden passage into the bunks of B3. TJ creates a new bit, jumping around whenever La Bombo Dominican plays. Our sensei Scott Sullivan returns for round two of karate training. And in what's maybe my favorite moment from season two so far, and I'm not just saying that because Scott and I have been uh, friendly with each other online, I know this can come off as sounding biased, but Scott set up a wall squat last man standing challenge. Megan, who strikes me as someone who seems to be lacking in self-confidence, showed herself how mentally tough she could actually be by beating out Shinji and winning the challenge. Oh, oh, winner. Megan, yeah! It's really crazy to me that Fish Tank, you know, for the most part, it's just this really insane, funny, hilarious show where people are getting abused in a house by production and the fans alike. But it, it's really incredible to me that it could also have these real uh, honest and earnest moments as well, where you can take someone who uh, clearly has a lot more to give to the world than she's letting on and doesn't really have any self-belief and then pushes past all her mental blocks to just have like this really honest moment where herself, with herself, where um, she showed that when, no pun intended, her back's against the wall, she can stand tall as a person. Sensei Scott then awards Megan the camo karate belt, a symbol of excellence awarded to the top student of the Jocko Willings Dojo. Does anyone know the grandmaster of our style of karate. Uh, he goes by the name of Jocko Whitney. Very illustrious career with the with the uh, green seals, okay? We have a belt named after the grandmaster of our style. This is called the Jocko belt. See, it's camouflage, an homage to the military. There's a rule for this. I give this to one person at the end of each class. You gotta keep wearing it. And that person's gonna be Meg. Come on down. Even when there's like a, a serious moment, they still find a way to be silly. And now it's probably a good time to officially announce that I am officially endorsing Megan. Megalodons, where ya at? Jimmy gets exposed by Sensei Scott for lying about training MMA and shows the fans that he actually knew nothing about fighting at all. TJ gets a pep talk from Josie. This is the only romance that I want to see from season two. You did it. You did so well. You did great. With what? Working out. No, thank you, thank you. You do that often? Uh, not recently, but usually during the summer I work out often with my friend. Very good, you're doing great. Uh, thank you. Keep it up, keep up the good work, keep pumping that iron. Okay, cool, I will. Very good, very good. Is this a pep talk? Something like that. Okay. Are you pep? Can I see some pep in your step? Yeah! <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you. Jet tells Trisha to flirt with Cole for chips. Taylee announces that someone dug through her undies to hide her belt, which crossed the line for her. I don't want people touching my underwear. I've had bad experiences with that. That's fucked up. Just putting it out there. I'm not trying to be a bitch. You're I'm not. Just trying to stand up for no, myself. No, you're not. In a dude's rock moment, Brian warns TJ that Taylee suspects him of being the panty bandit, but then their convo is cut short when La Bamba Dominican goes off. I swear it's not me, though. I promise you. You don't strike me as that type of guy, but she, she is incredibly suspicious of you because you keep going upstairs. She is incredibly suspicious Aww. of you. Just, just to show you. 
shout outs to whoever clipped that and had the caption dudes rock that really did make me laugh i'll try and include it here for a shout out cole and trisha flirt in b3 and jimmy creeps on them from the newly unlocked hidden passage things are getting too hot and heavy for trish and they start making out and talking about Jimmy. TTS tells the lovebirds that someone is listening to them from the passage under the bunk and they leave. Jimmy stumbles out of the bunk which kicks off Goon Gate. His pants seem to be completely off and with zoom in technology it also appears that he has a goon stain. Jimmy, offended by Trisha's private thoughts towards him, seasoned her bed with grits. Trisha walks in and Jimmy confronts her about talking behind his back. Trisha retaliates by making it rain throwing the bed grits at him. Day 7 the fish get an open bar at the reef with a door fee of two blue chips. It's a fairly relaxed night, but by far the standout is Shinji singing Cruel Angel's Thesis playing into the meme. With the fish now awake and it being Fish Miss Eve, Jet and the judge pop in to kick off a cookie baking challenge. That's my trade, that's my profession that I'm an old man. By nature, I'm more of a swamp man. I'm really, I'm really more of a swamp man by nature, you see? I'm less of an old man by nature, more of a swamp man. And in the swamp, we never did Christmas without no cookies. Christmas cookies, these are a special batch of Christmas cookies that we're gonna make. We're gonna make a special batch of Christmas cookies. These ain't Christmas cookies, they're Christmas cookies. They're gonna be good. They're good cookies. Jimmy is instructed to start calling Trish a but she ends up rolling with the bit, so because she seems to be enjoying it so much, Jet gives him a dog collar and a leash to put on her. Unfazed by Jimmy's take on women, Gold Striker tries to up the ante, giving Jimmy treats to feed her. When she's hungry, put some of this in the palm of your hand and have her eat it out of your hand, okay? Say, so you hungry, but And then, um, after she's eaten it, say, Make her say Jimmy Crack Corn. Brian is given the task of messing with everyone's cookies, which he does successfully. Gold Striker also informs them that they have to perform a nativity play. All right, y'all. Now, there's one thing I like more than a Christmas cookie. It's a good old-fashioned nativity play. I love me some Christmas carols and some theater. Now, you will be fined points for anything sacrilegious. This is not meant to be funny or involve any type of weird sexual... <coughs> Although Trish will have a collar around her neck, so maybe she could be with cattle or one of the mules in the story there. And Ben helps them practice up in B3. And in one of my favorite fish tank moments, and I've mentioned this before, generally my favorite moments are just like the small random things you just happen to catch if you're watching. Jet has a toothache and is asking Taylor advice for some reason up in B1. But whilst this is going on in B2, Jimmy is searching for the dolls and makes the hole in the wall even larger, leading to this moment. Yeah, it just hurts like sh it's like in my upper, like upper jaw, right here, and then below in my lower, a little bit. Of, I have like a psychotic meltdown in there. It could be Jimmy. Is he looking for dolls? I have no idea. Oh, not again. No, the dolls are not in the walls. The dolls are not in the walls. No. So that clicking I heard in the wall. How does this keep happening? looking for something on the wall. Um, back to what I was saying. It's like my upper jaw, like right here. Around 10 o'clock, Gold Striker returns for the bedtime challenge. Well, oh boy, it's my favorite time of day. Do you know what time it is, Cole? I don't know. It's bedtime. Oh. It's my favorite time of day. Do you know what time it is? I guess it's bedtime. There's a special thing about when you're sleeping on Christmas time. And that's, you know, the old adage, don't make a peep, or Gator gonna get you. Oh no. Don't make a peep, or Gator gonna get you. Now, I pray for the soul of anybody who dares make a peep in this house when it's bedtime. No, you can't get your stuff. You gotta go get on up to bed right now. Get on up there, now! Everyone is forced to go to bed and not make a peep. Jimmy has exemption as he has to make his eggnog in the kitchen silently. And with the house no longer stirring, Except for Jimmy. Nothing was stirring. Not even a mouse. That means I don't want to hear anybody stirring. Airsoft Santa arrives to taste test the cookies and leave presents for the fish. He then goes on a rampage through the house, letting off a grenade in the kitchen. Ah. 
and then moving room to room, terrorizing the fish with poppers and yelling. Leave me goddamn food in the room! This attracts flies! Can you smell it? All the pooiness, all that fly shit, just going everywhere! I was gonna compliment this child on a perfect room! Perfection! I'm outraged! Fuck! Woo! It's Christmas Eve, and I'm here to say Merry Christmas! Welcome back. Hold your sleep. Hell yeah! Let's see. All the activity gets Santa a little tuckered out, so he takes a nap in B2 with Mrs. Claus and literally breaks the bed. You know, I have actually slept in worse snowbanks, guys. Trish for Gold Striker continually pays Trish more and more money to have Fatty on top of her. Chris, be careful not accidentally suffocate her in your sleep. Ending in a sleigh ride, which is basically just reverse cowgirl, nearly crushing the poor girl's lungs. And that's it, folks. I'm going to try and have a speedy turnaround on my next episode, which will just be day eight, Christmas, Fishmas. So keep your eyes open for that. But outside of that, uh, bye.